product portfolio ka kapi panacea uh, data market ka provide karna starting from uh, uh, the BrickCAD uh, 2D, 3D and BIM solutions and uh, the Rhino series tools for uh, advanced surfacing and uh, Lumion for uh, all of the rendering purposes that you may have and uh, 3D connection for uh, a convenient device rather I would say for CAD designers to uh, minimize the time that they use uh, scrolling here and there and you know zooming panning tilting and uh, whatnot so uh, this is uh, those devices that i have uh, spoken to you about and uh, yeah so uh, why bricks cat now before we get into why bricks cat let me just give you a, a bit of an introduction into bricks uh v22 uh, yeah, Brixis is the global provider of uh, cost-effective modern computer data design, building information modeling, mechanical design, and uh, common data environment products uh, brought to the market under Brixcad and uh, Brixis 24/7 uh, brands. So, uh, uh, Brixcad is a partner entity. Then, at the market, we have a the market. We have computer data design tool provider connect and uh, as far as a global footprint is concerned Bixa, uh, Brixcat is a part of the hexagon uh, company and lakshatunaka uh, tatwada wedi users la pramanayak inna Brixcat walata ratawal exe 10 ekata wedi pramanayak and Brixcat kiyanne uh, belgium originated product ekak etakota apita api gathoth market ekak denata apita ek ek video wala product sambena 2d uh, drafting gana katha karanna gathata passe එතකොට චයිනීස් ප්‍රොඩක්ට්ස් තියෙන පුළුවන් ඒ වගේ එක එක ප්‍රොඩක්ට්ස් තියෙන කොට අපිට බ්‍රික්ස් කැඩ් එතනින් ස්ටෑන්ඩ් අවුට් වෙන්නේ අපිට යුරෝපියන් ප්‍රොඩක්ට් එකකින් බලාපොරොත්තු වෙන්න පුළුවන් ඒ ස්ටෑන්ඩර්ඩ් එකේ ක්වොලිටි එක අපිට බ්‍රික්ස් කැඩ් වලින් අඩුවක් නැතුව හම්බ වෙන්න පුළුවන් අ මේ තියෙන බ්‍රික්ස් කැඩ් ග්ලෝබල් ෆුට්ප්‍රින්ට් එක ඒ කියන්නේ ස්ටාටින් ෆ්‍රොම් දි බෙල්ජියම් හෙඩ් ක්වාටර්ස් හව් බ්‍රික්ස් කැඩ් ඉස් ස්ප්‍රෙඩ් ඇක්‍රොස් ද වර්ල්ඩ් and uh, yeah api uh, brick scad walata kiyanne the future of dwg kiyala ekata heetu godak thiyena ai api brick scad walata future of dwg kiyala kiyanne kiyana eka api ada me session ekak athule ta di walata honda adahasak ganna puluwan ai ai api brick scad walata future of dwg kiyala kiyanne kiyana karanawa etakota samanyen api gattoth ehema kumak ho heetu ekata api gattoth danata market eke api samanyen 2d drafting kiyapu gaman apata mataketa ena products ekak thiyena for an example autocad is the first thing which comes to our mind whenever we hear the term uh, 2d drafting etakota uh, etakota api bricks cad walin thiyena vaasiyak ekata uh, api hitama mokak hari heetuwak nisa organization ekak bricks cad walin maaru wena kota so organization ekak autocad walin maaru wena kota bricks cad walata eyalata ena moolikama prashnayak තමයි අපේ සොෆ්ට් වෙයර් එක ගැන හරි දැන් අපි දැන් එක සොෆ්ට් වෙයර් එකක් කියන එක ගැන අපි මේකේ අපි හොඳට අපි ෆැමිලියා මේකත් එක්ක අපි වෙන මොනවාකත් ට්‍රේනිං ඕන නැහැ අපි දැන් මේකත් එක්ක අපි හොඳට වැඩ කරනවා හැබැයි අපි වෙන ටූල් එකකට මාරු වෙන්න ගියොත් එහෙම අපි අර මේ අපේ පරණ දැනුමට මොකද වෙන්නේ අපිට ආයෙම අලුත් සොෆ්ට් වෙයර් එකක් අලුතින් පුරුදු වෙන්න වෙනවා අපි අවුරුදු ගානක් පුරුදු වෙච්ච සොෆ්ට් වෙයර් එකට අමතරව ටූල් එකකට අමතරව අපිට තව සොෆ්ට් වෙයර් එකකට පුරුදු වෙන්න වෙනවා ඒක කරදරයක් කියන එක හැබැයි බ්‍රික්ස් කැඩ් ඒක කලින් අඳුරගෙන තියෙනවා එතකොට මේ බ්‍රික්ස් කැඩ් තියෙන ඉන්ටර්ෆේස් එක ඔයාලට තව පොඩ්ඩක් වෙලාකින් බලා ගන්න පුළුවන් වගේ මේක ඔයාලා දැනට පාවිච්චි කරන ඕනම 2D 2D ඩ්‍රාෆ්ටින් ටූල් එකකට ගොඩක්ම සමානයි ඒ තියෙන ටූල් පැලට්ස් ඒ වගේම කමාන්ඩ්ස් ඒ විදිහටම ඔයාලට බ්‍රික්ස් කැඩ් ඇතුළෙත් පාවිච්චි කරන්න පුළුවන් අපි දැනට ගොඩක් ක්ලයන්ට්ස් ලා ඉන්නවා අපේ ලංකාව ඇතුළත බ්‍රික්ස් කැඩ් යූස් කරන එහාලගෙන් අපිට ට්‍රේනින් එකක් දෙන්න ඒ කියන්නේ ආහාරි මේ සොෆ්ට් වෙයර් එකට අපිට ට්‍රේනින් එකක් ට්‍රේනින් එකක් අරගෙන වැඩ කරන්න ගත්ත යූසර්ස් ලා ඉන්නේ ගොඩක්ම පොඩි ප්‍රමාණයක් එහෙම නැතිම තරම් මොකද එයාලා ඒ කියන්නේ ඔයාලා ඕටකැඩ් හරි වෙන මොකක් හරි 2D ඩ්‍රාෆ්ටින් ටූල් එකක් එක ෆැමිලියා නම් බ්‍රික්ස් කැඩ් ඕපන් කරගත්තු ගමන් ඔයාලට කිසිම ට්‍රේනින් එකක් නැතුව ඔයාලගේ වැඩ ටික ඉස්සරහට කරගෙන යන්න පුළුවන්කම තියෙනවා and එතකොටම තව ප්‍රශ්නයක් තමයි යම් කිසි ඕගනයිසේෂන් එකක් අපි ටූල් එක කින් තව ටූල් එකකට මූව් වෙනකොට another obstacle that they get is that what happens to our legacy data එකන අපි දැන් මෙච්චර කාලයක් අපි මේ ටූල් එක පාවිච්චි කරලා තිනෝ let's say for an instance AutoCAD කියලා right අපි මෙච්චර කාලයක් AutoCAD පාවිච්චි කරලා තිනෝ එතකොට අපිට මෙච්චරක ප්‍රමාණයක් legacy data තියෙනවා අපි මෙච්චරක ඩ්‍රෝවින් ප්‍රමාණයක් මේ අවුරුදු ගානක් ඇතුළත කරලා තියෙනවා ඒ දේවල් වලට මොකද වෙන්නේ අපි ඒ ටික ඔක්කොම අතරලා ආයෙම bricks cad ඇතුළේ මේවා recreate කරන්න ඕනද සහ අපිට ක්ලයන්ට්ස් ලා ඉන්නවා අපිට එයාලා AutoCAD පරණ වර්ෂන්ස් වලින් තමයි 
ෆයිල් ෆයිල් පරණ ෆයිල් ෆෝමැට්ස් වලින් තමයි අපිට ඩ්‍රෝවින්ග්ස් දෙන්නේ ඊට පස්සේ ගත්තොත් අපේ තව ඩිස්ටන්ස් සයිඩ් ඔෆිසස් තියෙනවා එයාලගේ කම්පියුටර්ස් වල තියෙන පරණ ඔටකඩ් එතකොට එයාලා අපිට ප්‍රොවයිඩ් කරන්නේ ඔටකඩ් ඩ්‍රෝවින්ග්ස් පරණ වර්ෂන්ස් වලින් කොහොමද මේ කොම්පැටිබිලිටි එක වැඩ කරන්නේ කියන එක එතකොට ඇත්තටම බ්‍රික්ස් කැඩ් කියන්නේ 100% ඔටකඩ් පරණ අනම වර්ෂන් එකේ ඉඳලා අලුත්ම වර්ෂන් එකට වෙනකන් කිසිම හිකප් එකක් කිසිම ලැබ්ස් එකක් නැතුව සපෝට් කරන සොෆ්ට්වෙයා එකක් ඔයාලට ඕන මොවාලගේ තියෙන ඩ්‍රෝවිං එකක් ගත්තොත් ඒක බ්‍රික්ස් කැඩ් වලින් ඒ කියන්නේ ඕටකැඩ් වල තියෙන ඩ්‍රෝවිං එකක් බ්‍රික්ස් කැඩ් වල ඕපන් කරොත් එහෙම ඒ තියෙන ඩීටේල්ස් හැමදේම ඔයාලට අපි ගත්තොත් ලේයර්ස් වෙන්න පුළුවන් හැච් පැටර්න්ස් ඩිමෙන්ෂන්ස් ඒ වගේම ෆොන්ට්ස් ඒ ඔක්කොම සියලුම දේවල් ඩිෆෝල්ට් තියෙන ඒ සියලුම දේවල් ඔයාලට प्रश्न <laughs> अभी <laughs> ऐप स्टो एक अपागे तो कुछ टाइम एक दिन वाला टा स्ट्रीमलाइन हो चाहे मैंने तंग वाला टा ओना वर्टिकल लेकर टा स्पेसिफिक हो चाहे एप्लिकेशन ने का वाला टा एप्लिकेशन सो वाला टा वाला के दाना टा एक्सिस्टिंग ब्रिक्स कैट डूड दुआ ने प्लगइन्स एडोंस वागे पाविच कराने क्या होती है न and uh, yeah ai uh, api gatto den api a hari bricks kad gana software ekak hatiyata api dala uh, description ekak dunna den uh, ai yam kisi company ekak uh, bricks kad thora ganna one why why should an organization uh, choose bricks kad over whatever the ca- other kads available in the market uh, so uh, initially the first of all the first thing which comes to our mind is the uh, licensing option which otacad has uh, pursued during past couple of years which is that the uh, users have to go you know they it's mandatory that they go under the uh, annual subscription license which is uh, kind of a bummer if you ask us because uh, uh, if if an organization picks uh, a software right they should have a say in what type of a license that they should get right yes annual subscription can be there as an option but if a particular institution or an organization decides to go forward with a perpetual licensing option they should have that flexibility that's what we at bricks believe so uh, to cater this uh, market you know bricks cad uh, has come up with this all sort of licensing uh, policies right all at a kamathi licensing policy ekata mokada samaharo inna puluwan yes there can be to prefer subscription option right and uh, there can be people, uh, like perpetual licenses ekena api eka para payment ekak karanawa it passe api kemathi dikata me license ekak tiyagena apita updates api me initial parana palaweni avurudha hambunata passe api ta prashnayak naha apita me ka api api tiyen operations wala me software ekak athi then we are happy to stay with this so if that is the case then we believe that client should have that uh, option to stick to whatever the licensing policy that they prefer so ek nisa thama bricks card la honda diversified vecha licensing options tikak diyala tiyena api gattoth single license perpetual licenses kemathi nan alata subscription and puluwan network multi users licenses me wage honda flexible licensing options tikak diyala tiyena bricks card dwelling to cater the user need it's got a user to pull on tamang uh, purchase karna tamang organization air purchase karna software ka mona licensing option ne kada mama ganna kiyala select karanna e wage ma thamai cost ekak athin gatto bricks cad kiyanne sahenna cost effective software ekak uh, walata perena athi me thiyenne walata pro bricks cad versions kihip ekak thiyena pro light uh, mechanical saha bim wage etakota me thiyenne walata pro uh, uh pro is uh, an equivalent to autocad uh, full version so metana diyo alata tiyenne me license 10 ekin 
कोच्चर का टाइम सेविंग है क्या गाना पुलवा अंदर किया ने एक अक्रॉस फाइव इयर्स दिस इज द फाइनेंशियल बेनिफिट दैट यू कुड गेन बाय ब्रिक्स कैड राइट इट्स अ लॉट इफ यू आस्क फॉर अ कंट्री लाइक अस राइट फॉर अ कंट्री लाइक अस द डिफरेंस ओ द रिडक्शन ऑफ कैड इन्वेस्टमेंट बाय सिक्सटी right so uh, this is uh, one of the uh, you know prime reason besides the all the features and the new uh, ai based tools you uh, know autocad wala ta wada bricks cad wala athule gatto tapi ai based functionalities tools you know etokota menne me de wala ta amathara besides all the technological advancements and the edges that bricks cad provide this has been a prime reason for people to pick uh, bricks cad over the autocad इतकोट मे थी श्रीलंक सक्सेस् स्टोरी दनट लंका सार्थक ब्रिक्स कैड पावित करना आयतने की मम पेन्ना सो शंग्रिल प्रॉपर्टी देव वन आफ द वेरी फस्ट ऑर्गनजेशन टू मूव हेड वित् ब्रिक्स कैड इतकोट अला सिंस् द कन्वर्शन टू ब्रिक्स कैड दे हेव यूज टू ऑलमोस्ट ऑल ऑफ द प्रोडक्ट ऑल ऑफ द कंस्ट्रक्शन प्रोजेक्ट bricks cut they all pavichi karala thiyena including uh, the development of uh, one goal face mall and uh, kwa architects is one of uh, the uh, premium uh, architectural firms in the country so uh, they moved from autocad to bricks cut in uh, 2021 with their designers using bricks cut as their daily driver to uh, deliver their magic and uh, besides that so uh, that was from uh, engineering uh, architectural and construction domain and uh, we are not really limited to that as you can see uh, on telecommunication uh, domain sierra telecommunication is one of again one of the very early adapters to bricscat and currently they are very successful using bricscat for their operation besides that yes uh, it's it's like we have been able to cater uh, a diverse set of clients uh, through this uh, bricscat software and as you could see so up to now we have discussed about people who have uh, moved to bricscat uh, to cater their construction architectural and engineering purposes and telecommunication as well as now uh, presenting you uh, sri lankan catering ravi malanka and atlas axelia now these uh, organizations also they have been using autocad and they have migrated from uh, autocad to bricscat uh, in last year and they are uh, using for they are using this bricks cat software for their general purposes including uh, civil drawings and uh, mechanical uh, part designing and Ashir, I think we lost you. Ashir, I think we lost you. Ashir. Aman, I think uh, you can take over. <clears throat> yeah, thanks, Ashin, and uh, yeah. So, a uh, very good afternoon, everyone. Uh, to all my dear colleagues from Sri Lanka, it is an honor to be in front of you guys. So, myself, Aman Jain, and I'm working as a technical solution consultant for the Sark region. Uh, with the hexagon team so i'm uh, from brixis and i handle the uh, sark region completely as a technical solution consultant so uh, that was a very power pack presentation from ashen and thank you for that and i hope it did energize many of you all uh, 
what my task would be is to take you all through a live demonstration of BricsCAD. OK, so what I'll do, I'll just quickly share my screen and Samira or someone if you could just confirm if you all are able to see my screen, I'll continue. Are you all able to see my screen? Yes, someone we can see and we can hear you clearly as well. Thanks. Great, thanks. Thanks, Ashin, for confirming. So uh, pretty much Ashin has covered uh, most of the parts of the presentation that we generally talk about of why to migrate to BricsCAD and how migration has been made very simple in terms of uh, the work that is required, right? So I'll be talking on some of those points uh, while showing all the live demonstration of the software. Uh, let me begin with simply by introducing you all to the interface of BricsCAD, how and what it looks like. So if it are used the new version of AutoCAD, let's say from AutoCAD 2015 or 16 onwards, wherein they introduced the ribbon, ribbon interface uh, inside their own uh, software. So we have the same kind of a ribbon interface over here in BricsCAD as well. Now we have the menu bar over here, the quick access toolbar, the ribbon tab, the model layout tab, the multiple drawing tabs, uh, the command line as well as the status bar, which is exactly the same as your current CAD environment. So I'd be comparing most of the times with AutoCAD only because that is being the industry standard as of now in the CAD systems, uh, CAD market. Uh, now what do we have else is the command compatibility uh, and the muscle memory compatibility that Ashin was talking about. So let's say L is for line even in BricsCAD and I'll be able to create those lines very easily. I, if I press F8, I go into the ortho mode and I can just create perpendicular lines. If I press F8 again, uh, I'd be able to draw lines at any particular angles along with the dimensions. So I can enter dim uh, dynamic dimensions depending upon the length or the angle that I want to enter over here. So that is the first part. The next drawing tool C for circle is the same. RECT for rectangle is the same. So for example, if you want any other modification commands to be used, if I use CO, copy for example, your selection buttons, let's say green selection window or the blue selection window, they remain the same. So if I copy now, if I want to copy all of these objects, hit enter, select the base point and do a power copy like this. So that is one thing that remains the same. Uh, if I want to move certain objects, for example, M enter, select the objects that you'd want to move, select the base point, that remains the same. Uh, your entity snap options, for example, all your entity snaps remain the same, endpoint, midpoint, center, node, geometric center, nearest tangent, etc. So which is what you could control it from over here. And uh, regarding the other things, you have text, multi-line text, the type of dimensions that you'd want to make, linear, aligned, rotated, angular, arc radius, etc. Your layers, layer manager, uh, switch on or off the layers, isolate and isolate the layers, freeze or thaw the layers, lock or unlock the layers, etc. Insert blocks, create block definitions, edit a block definition, then uh, define attributes to your blocks, match properties, grouping and grouping, measuring utilities. So all of these commands, they work the same way, exact same way what they do it in your current CAD environment, right? Now uh, what I'll be discussing about more is the features that we have explicitly in BricsCAD, which would not be available in any of the other CAD softwares, or they might be available to a certain extent, but not to the extent where you could use it in BricsCAD. So that is something I'm going to talk about. I'll show you all live. Plus the second thing is I'll be talking about the productivity impact that it would have in your day to day routine activity. So for example, if a certain task say takes five minutes or seven minutes for it to get completed, it may take let's say 30 seconds or 40 seconds in BricsCAD. Now when that happens on a regular basis, just imagine the amount of time you'd be saving on uh, getting the output of your drawing file. So that is something that would be focusing on apart from the normal regular CAT commands that I just showed. Now let's begin with the parameter city that is available in BricsCAD. So BricsCAD can create parametric components. You can define geometric relationships you can define dimensional relationships you can also tell the software to define the relationships 
for you by using the auto constraint feature uh, that is available. So for example, if I draw a rectangle and I do an auto constraint on this, hit enter. The software itself will create the geometrical relationships as well as the dimensional relationships for me in and this is uh, what I can find it in the parametric dialog box. And now if I change the dimensions, let's say to 8000. OK, so I get the 8000 uh, length for my rectangle. So this is something that you can have with the auto constraint feature wherein just within one click the software will give the constraints for you for the drawings. Now, once your constraints are done, once you have applied the constraints either manually or with the help of the software auto constraint feature, you can assign a table. OK, now you can assign a design table with the help of a design table command. It is nothing but a simple spreadsheet or a CSV file. OK, a comma separated value file, which is I'll show it over here. And I have the types from E to H with the parameters that I have defined the same parameters I have typed in over here and I have assigned values. OK, now once I do that, once I have applied the constraints, I can sort of create an automated drawing wherein I have multiple sizes of the same component inside one single drawing and I'm controlling these parameters via an Excel sheet. So this is not without not with coding. This is nothing to do with any coding automation. This is just simple linking of Excel sheet with your drawing data. OK, so once you have created your relationships and parameters, you can simply assign an Excel sheet, define the values for your parameters and within that then you can get multiple sizes of your components. Right, so for example, you can insert it and in, in your drawing as well. So if I go over here and insert a M20 or an M48 bolt, for example, OK, so I want to be able to insert it over here. Let's say just for an example, if I click on this bolt now, if I go to its properties, I have assigned a design table to this as well, and I can choose the various configurations that I have defined. So for example, I want it at M48 with a shank length of 360 or M48 with a shank length of 460. So you can do that within the design table configurations that are made available to me. Now once that's done, you can even uh, with the help of visibility states, choose the type of view that you'd want to do. And this is the kind of automation that we can achieve with the help of the parametric parametric options that are available. So let me go to one more uh, drawing wherein I have created a door library. So once you have created your parametric component, you can even store it as a library component, which then you can just simply drag and drop and just insert it wherever required. So I over here I'm inserting a door into the wall system that's there and I very easily very quickly inserted the door with the help of the parameters that were assigned. And it automatically trimmed because I had assigned the reference curves and not just that if I click over here you can see certain green lines that are there which is the flip lines that are associated with. So if I go to the properties of the door and let's say if I want uh, a closed position of the door at this end or if I want to change it to half open or fully open, I can select that. If I want to be flipped it across the hinge side or I can do this. OK, so if I want the door to be in the downwards direction, I can do this. You need not again and again uh, delete it and reinsert it. You can simply assign the parameters and choose the configuration which you would want to. And then again, you can uh, work with the parameters, of course. So if you wish to have a greater thickness, for example, you can choose to you can choose a value of 100 and you would get a greater thickness over here without your original component getting affected. So if I bring drag and drop the component over here, it still be in its original format. So you can create your entire set of 2D library components inside BrickScan with the help of parameters. Now, uh, Again, uh, you know, there are a lot of uh, users who have created dynamic blocks in AutoCAD. So dynamic blocks is something that is supported in BricsCAD. However, you would not be able to create dynamic blocks that you can create in uh, AutoCAD, but you can bring in your dynamic blocks. You'd be seeing icons like this over here, and then depending upon the requirement and the configuration that you'd want to choose, you can change your dynamic blocks accordingly. So dynamic blocks are very well supported inside BricsCAD. However, the only limitation, current limitation of the software is you cannot create a dynamic block in 
FlexCAD. However, you can just open it and use it the way you use it in AutoCAD. So this is something that is available. Now talking about new advanced features, OK, AI and ML integrated features. Now the one feature that I want to show you is Blockify. This is a drawing that I just downloaded today morning, which is a glass wall system, details of a glass wall system. And right now what has happened is this block, this drawing has come all together in an exploded format. OK, I downloaded it from the web uh, just to see the details of the drawing and everything has come in an exploded format because the user whosoever would have uploaded it would have just drew the drawing and he wouldn't have defined any blocks or whatsoever and let's say when I open it in an open it in BricsCAD it's come in exploded format. Now what do I do if I were to make changes at this for example these are my Louver profiles and if I want to make changes at this Louver profiles uh, the only option I have is to do it manually. So this is something I need to do manually for each and every one of the profile that is there in my drawing. Now, in order to avoid that, Pixcad has got an option called as Blockify. So you can do a lot of things in Blockify. I'll just be showing you the basic thing wherein it automatically converts all matching entities to block definitions. OK, now as you could see, all of these are polylines. So what I'll do is I'll select the command called as Blockify. I'll select the source entities, just make the selection of whatever that needs to be there in my block. I just made a single selection. I'll hit enter, select the block insertion point. So let's say this is my block insertion point. Select the search space. So I want to be able to search for the entire drawing and I'll tell BricsCAD that wherever this kind of a geometry is there with the exact same properties, please convert them into blocks for me. So I just enter louver and what BricsCAD automatically did is it automatically converted six geometries into block inserts for me. So now this is a block. This is a block. This is a block, OK, which were all polylines a step before. Now since all of them are blocks, I can simply go to my block edit and let's say if I want to make any change over here, let's say I just entered a line, a simple line, a simple change and that would be visible all across my drawings wherever these inserts are there, right? So this is a simple, very simple use case of Blockify wherein I can convert matching geometries into blocks just by one single click, okay? I'll show you the feature once again. It could be any kind of a geometry. I'll click Blockify. Again, these are all polylines with me. These are again aluminum sun lower profiles, so these are all uh, polyline geometries. I'll select Blockify, select the entities, right? And once I've selected the entity, select the insertion point. Let's say this one, search space entire drawing, the end uh, name. So let's say this is aluminum, right? And once I've done this, everything is converted into the block definitions and not just that if you go to the drawing explorer and if you go to the block definitions over here in this drawing i get a block definition and you want this block definition to be copy pasted in a blank drawing you can simply do it within the drawing explorer so that aluminum louver is now available in the blank drawing that i'd opened so i can insert it in that drawing as well so it's that easy to be able to transfer data from one drawing to another okay so that's the use of Blockify for you. So if I go back to my class wall systems and now if I edit it, for example, if I add a circle over here, just a circle and make it parametric. So I'll give a radius constraint to this. OK, now I've given a radius constraint to this. I'll go to my block editor, save the block. And as soon as I do that, one thing we need to notice is if I go to the properties, BricsCAD would have assigned the radius constraint to each of this block definitions that is present. And now if I go to the properties of this block definition, I can very well change the circle radius. So I'll make it four, for example. And I can have multiple definitions of the same block inside one single drawing. So over here, the dimension, this block definition still remains the same. Over here, the diameter is four. Over here, the diameter is six point something. And I can then, you know, change it over here as well. Let's say make it eight. 
OK, so this is something that can be done inside BigScan with the help of parameters within the blocks as well. So this covers one of the smart command that is introduced called as Blockify, which is something that you would not be finding in your AutoCAD environment. The next cool feature which I want to speak about is the copy guided and the move guided feature. Now what does the copy guided and the move guided do is it traditionally it, the normal traditional way of copying an object would be so we talk about that first so that you get a gist of what I'm trying to do. So I just copy this so far over here onto this curved wall. OK, and once I copy it, just see it orientation doesn't align with the curvature of the wall, right? It stays in the same orientation and then if I were to change its orientation, I need to again uh, select the reference angle or search for the reference angle and then move or rotate this particular entity till the point where this matches exactly the same orientation and stuff like that. So it takes a lot of time for especially for the designer to be able to achieve something like this. Now what happens with so all these are polylines again? What happens uh, with the copy guided feature is let's say I select this. I'm asking the software to copy the object, but along with guide references. So as soon as I do this kind of a selection, you see the blue lines at the bottom, which were the walls earlier. They will act like a guide curve. So as soon as I place on an entity something similar to my wall, it will automatically realign itself onto that curvature arm. And also it allows me to give the dimensions or reference angles in this case for me to be able to place the block at the exact position in one single go. So let's say I want to place it at 45 degrees and I'm good to go and I just placed it along with its orientation matching the exact curve. Right, so this is something that I could achieve just by one click or one single step that is copy guided feature. It's not limited to just copying entities which are over and above, but it also copies objects which are across. So for example, if I copy this door now, so it understands that the wall again is the source entity or the reference curve entity and the door is the source entity in this case. You could see the blue lines, the three blue lines on both the ends. So those are my reference uh, curves and as soon as I place it on the vertical wall over here, so you see how it realigns itself onto the vertical wall without having me to rotate it or even position it or whatsoever. I can easily save six to different six to seven different steps in one single go. Not just that it would also allow me to give dimensions so I can enter let's say 1500. I hit enter and it not just placed my block. It also trimmed the wall beneath it. So this is something that is amazing that is cool and that can be achieved with the help of the copy guided feature. The next is move guided of course, so we just didn't stop there. Uh, move guided what it does is let's say basically I have positioned it at the wrong place, so I want to reposition it. So I'll just make the selection again and I want to reposition it over here, but this time around I want to flip it. OK, or I want to change the door orientation, the opening orientation so I can come from up to down or I can go from bottom to top or top to bottom. So it, or it would understand my cursor movements as well. Or I could simply even bring it from the vertical wall position to a horizontal wall position, right? So I can go from left to right. It will understand the uh, cursor movement. I can go from right to left and I can go to top or bottom and I'll just simply click over here now. Once that's done, could easily see how it could trim itself and so I just do it once again. Move guided and I want to move it over here so it would just easily be able to trim itself and reposition it again. OK, so this is something that can be done with the help of copy guided and move guided. The next feature that I want to talk about is a very cool feature uh, again something that is very basic, but something that is extremely useful. Uh, so whenever I select any two objects in BricsCAD, it automatically shows the distance between those two objects. Now please note that this is nearest distance. This is not center to center distance. You can see the points between which it's showing the distance to me, right? So if I select these two entities now, I can simply 
also enter the distances that I would want between them, the nearest distance, and I can move the second entity. It's as if I'm working in a very automated work. I'm having a very automated workflow wherein I can simply enter distances between two entities and the second entity that I select would move. So I'd show it to you all once again. If I select these two entities, for example, or the table and the chair in this case, and if I want to change the distance between them, I did not want it to be 63. I want it to be 150. Okay, I can simply enter the distance and make it move. Likewise, I can do the same thing for this particular chair as well. And I can make it move. I can also get the distances in terms of X and Y. So for example, if I have this line and a rectangle, and if I select these two entities, uh, any between any two entities, Brickshare should be able to give me the distance. And if I double click within it, it will give me the references or the vector distance in terms of X and Y. So if I just want to move it in Y direction or if I just want to move it in X direction, I can do that simply by entering the distance in the X and Y positions respectively. So if I want to move it, let's say 500 at this end, I can do that. So it would just move 500 across this direction and not in the Y axis. So this is something that is very useful again, which is available in BricsCAD right at your mouse tips. Need not uh, necessarily use a command or type in a command to be able to achieve this task. Whenever you select two entities, BricsCAD would be able to give you the distance between those two entities. Right now, what I'll do is I'll just make some other changes, some changes that I want to make. And uh, let's say I've been asked to put this entity, put this chair back to its original position. So this is another new feature that I'm talking about wherein without undoing the entire thing, whatever I just did, I can simply bring this back to its original reference position. So that is quite amazing because this is a problem a lot of users and the designers face wherein they have made a change Afterwards, they have made certain other changes and then they have been asked the initial change which was which they had made. They need to bring it back to its original reference position or original place where they were or revert back to its original position, whatever it could be, right? So this is something uh, that requires a complete control Z till the point this was at its original place or you can or the user would simply just do a close and save no. So this is something again which would be a time consuming process. Now inside Prexcad, what you can do is you can simply select the entity for which you want to do undo and the feature is called undo per entity. So as the name suggests, every entity has a history recorded to it. So you can undo it to the first step and bring it back to its original place without affecting the other changes that I made. So every entity be it this particular rectangle, let's say I moved it across, right? So every entity or even I could change its shape, let's say. If I see this, if I go to its history, I can bring it back to its original shape or I can even push it back to its original reference position where it exactly was without affecting the other changes that I made, right? So this is a real time saver which is available in BricsCAD, wherein you can undo per entity. BricsCAD would record the history of the changes for the entity that you've done, and that would be only for that particular session, of course. So it would just go away if you close the file. Even if you save the file, it won't just vanish. OK, so for example, if I now uh, make some changes over here, let's say, and now I'm saving the file. So I just did a control S which saved my file. And now if I go to the history of this particular rectangle, it would still be there. OK, you see the number of steps you can go back to right along with the preview of what changes you have made. So this is something that is really advantageous. Even after saving, it's still available unless you close the file and completely move out of it. It still be there in your ROM. Right, so these are certain new features that are available in BricsCAD, which is something that you would not be finding in AutoCAD. <clears throat> now the next feature is something that is really very important in terms of quality. So we need to, of course, everyone of us over here are uh, 
especially in the recent days, quality does matter a lot when we submit it to our clients. And in order to do those quality check processes, it takes a lot of time. It consumes a lot of time. For example, there are these open gaps that have been left in the drawing. It could be by mistake. It could have been overlooked. And then one has to simply do a quality check run over all the drawings. And let's say, you know, this is a very simple drawing with certain open gap that I can see and certain open gap that I cannot see over here. Now, this is one simple drawing. Imagine, you know, you guys have been working with hundreds and hundreds of drawing and you need to do a quality check for each of this drawing. It takes a lot of time and a manual effort again. Over here in BricsCAD, there is a very simple method wherein which you can identify open gaps. OK, so this is something. Uh, this is a pain area that I'd be issuing addressing wherein you can very easily identify open gaps between entities. How you can do that is simply with the help of nearest distance feature. So whenever you select two entities, if it shows a distance between them, that means there is a gap for sure. You need not hatch the boundary to be able to find the gap and simply select two entities. And if there's a distance, any sort of distance, you are sure that there's a gap between these two entities. If I select this two, now the distance is zero. That means they are coincident with each other. Right, so this is very easily how can identi how can I identify gaps? Now this is identification. There's a command called as optimize, wherein you get options to be able to close the gaps by yourself. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll just hit a line over here in the center for you to be able to understand it better. And the gap between these two lines is 2.33. I'll use optimize, okay, and between these two is 1.44, so I'll just shorten this line a bit. Now it's more, okay, it's more, it's more over here as well. So I can use optimize, and what I'm telling the software to do for me is I'll just assign it as a gap, a gap tolerance. Now, when that gap tolerance is assigned, all I'm telling the software is to close the gaps which lie within 2 mm of distance. OK, so when I do that and hit OK, whatever lied within 2 mm of distance, it automatically closed the gaps for me. And imagine you can do this for the entire set of drawing just within one single click. You just give it a tolerance value and whatever lies within the tolerance value, the software will automatically close the gap for you. Now, you can also select individual entities. OK, so select entities in the drawing. You want to be able to close the gaps between these four lines and the gap tolerance that you would want to give is 3 mm. OK, so once you give do that, the only distance which was below 3 mm was this, so it automatically closed the gap for you. It did not close it over here because that was greater than 3 mm, which is 4.78 and 5.71. So this is what I wanted to show wherein you can also select the lines for which you would want to run the optimize command for or you can also do it for the entire set of drawing just within one single click. So this is an optimization tool that is available in BricsCAD along with the other optimization tools of course uh, like purge, audit, etc. Another optimization tool that I want to talk about is the process of simplification. Now, I've been told that many of the customers that are there over here are from the AAC industry, uh, and many of those are from construction. So, what happens if you receive a drawing wherein you had, you need to deal with a lot of polylines, for example, right? Now, polylines can certainly have lot of lot of data wherein each polyline has a lot many number of vertices to work with and those vertices are really not necessary. So for example, this particular polyline that I am uh, highlighting over here moving across has 3,50,000 vertices and if you see the file of this particular uh, file size of this particular drawing, it's uh, 7.6 MB, right? So this is the file size that of the uh, drawing that I'm dealing with and with the help of the simplification command over here, what it basically does is it would automatically reduce the number of number of vertices on polylines and also on hatch boundaries if there are. So I can simply select this particular polyline. So remember, as I mentioned earlier, there were 3,50,000 vertices on this particular polyline. If I were to show you those, it would take another 20-25 seconds, but I showed you those, but 
uh, this is something that is there for sure. Uh, and I'm all I'm doing is I'm telling the software to simplify the polyline for me. And now when I select it and see the properties, the number of vertices have reduced to 450. OK, so from 350,000 to 450 number of vertices, that's almost an 80 percent deduction in the number of vertices that were there on my polyline. Of course, you know it doesn't change the shape or the geometry of the line that is there. And likewise, if I do a save as now. Underscore simplified. So this is the file that I said, and if you see the file size, it has reduced to 4.7 MB. So only 3 MB of vertices is what is it was occupying, which is really unrequired and not necessary. And it's just eating up my memory space in terms of RAM and ROM both. OK, so in order to work with these kind of files, you always have an option to use the simplification of complex polylines, wherein you can ask the software to be able to simplify it for you. The next thing that I want to talk about is another good enhancement that has come in version 22, which is called as uh, OK, so all of us know what overkill does. Overkill basically deletes duplicate entities, overlapping entities which are there on top of one another and an additional overkill uh, feature that Brickscar has brought across is something that I want to talk about, wherein if you see the number of blocks that I have over here, is 142 wherein some of these blocks are redundant or some of the block definitions are matching exactly the same against one another so what happens is if you do have extra number of blocks within your space it really doesn't create uh, a useful uh, thing right it, it really occupies space because of these block definitions that are there and with the help of this overkill a uh, new feature called as combined duplicate block definitions. I can tell the software to purge duplicate blocks and bring them into single uh, block definitions. So if you see, if I press F2, these many blocks have been purged. This, this has been found and this has been integrated with one another. So what has happened now is if I go to my drawing explorer back earlier where there were 142 block definitions, now there are just 53. So that even drastically reduces or even optimizes the drawing file for me in terms of the uh, working on that particular drawing file. So uh, the, the the plan to show you all this commands where BricsCAD, the commands that we bring in, the commands that we re, uh, you know adapt to or intelligently develop it are of course to put to use in uh, for the user. OK, we do not just develop it for the sake of developing it, right? We want the user to be able to use the commands and really have a big impact on the productivity that they have. So that's the final aim. Now, uh, in terms of other features like inserting PDFs or attaching XREFs, attaching raster images or PDF import for that matter, you can do it within BricsCAD. So with the help of PDF import, if it's a CAD converted PDF, you'd be able to vectorize it. So BricsCAD would be able to vectorize it for you. So if I just hit enter, all I've done is imported a PDF and it has vectorized the PDF for me. So now all of these are drawing entities and if I go to home, all my layers and all are available for me to be able to use it. You can simply uh, hide all these layers and now if I would want to make certain changes, I can simply do that. Let's say if I want to delete this entire table set arrangement, you can do that within the PDF itself and save it as a new PDF and reshare the drawing. Right, but if it's a CAD converted PDF, of course it would vectorize it. However, you can also, if it's a scanned PDF or uh, an image that you'd want to insert, you can do that within BricsCAD. So I'll just take this as an insertion point. <clears throat> and this is a PDF attachment now, right? You cannot do anything with this in terms of vectorization. So this is just a PDF which you can clip OK, so you can clip your PDF or change the border of the PDF uh, that's visible. 
So let's say you would want to change the border of your PDF that you have attached to be able to highlight it. And let's say if you would want to clip your PDF to a certain extent, you can clip it as well. So let's say a new clipping boundary. I just want to see a portion from here till here, let's say, or here. I can just simply see this much amount of portion and select this. And if I want to see it or uh, you know see the clip part or the entire part, I can control from the property options that are there. In terms of image attachment, you can attach a raster image. The files that are supported are bitmaps, JPEGs, PNGs, GIFs, CIFs, etc. So you can click on uh, you know the type of image that you'd want to insert. And your image is ready to use. In terms of the image quality adjustment, you can change the brightness, the contrast, the fade ratios for your images. You can as well clip the images inside your drawings just the same way that we had done for the PDF. Can adjust, can even uh, tell the software like what quality of image that you'd want to use. You want to use a draft or a high quality of image so that you know when you send it or when you e transmit it your uh, clients if you would want a lower size of the drawing file to be uh, to be transmitted you can uh, choose it at a draft quality or if you would want a superior quality of the image to be transmitted you can choose the quality to be high so these are certain uh, you know additional regularly used features is what BricsCAD does support and in terms of the file saving versions Pixcat does support uh, 2018, 13, 10, 7, 4, 2014, 11, 10, 9. So dated back 30 years ago, I guess, uh, when an AutoCAD started from AutoCAD release 9 uh, DXF formats. So you can save as your drawings in all these formats, right? Right from 2018 to AutoCAD release 9. And in terms of the compatibility with the latest AutoCAD, uh, that is 2022 version. BricsCAD is much, very much compatible in terms of reading your data, reading your block definitions, reading your dimension styles, reading your text fonts, shape files, anything for that matter. It's quite capable in reading it 100% for you without having data loss in your software, right? And this is to and fro. So be it a BricsCAD drawing, uh, which you sh share it with, a customer or a vendor who's using AutoCAD or be it an AutoCAD drawing that you, you share it to someone who's using BricsCAD, both are to and fro 100% compatible. Okay, so this is something that is there within the software itself. Now, uh, that is it from me for the 2D part. So if there are any questions, please feel free to throw it to me. Yeah. OK, so I guess there were two questions in the chat box. I believe I've already addressed those questions. Uh, I just did not see them. I just saw them now. So if there are any questions, please feel free to forward those to me. Uh, just one thing I wanted to talk about one more thing. Uh, something that BricsCAD has within it is what we call as Lisp. OK, now this Lisp is available even in the light version of BricsCAD. That is the 2D drafting module of BricsCAD, wherein if you all are using AutoCAD LT, AutoCAD LT does not support Lisp programming. So to be able to work on Lisp, you need to have the full version of AutoCAD. However, in BricsCAD, the 2D light version of BricsCAD also supports Lisp programming. So you can simply load it and run your Lisps able to automate your drawings, right? And you get a Lisp editor as well, which we call it as Blade, which is uh, which stands for BricsCAD Lisp Advanced Development Environment, which is something that you'd get within the software setup itself. OK, so this is not something that you'd need to load externally, but it is available. And on top of that, of course, these Express tools that are available, uh, you know, most of us do use Express tools. So Express tools are available. And of course, uh, Ashin did talk about the third party applications that BricsCAD does support. So there are a lot of third party applications 
uh, that are available on top of our bricks card. So you get access to all of these. So for example, if I go to AC segment and explore it. So you can see a bunch of applications dedicated to a specific type of industry that sits on top of bricks card and then you can make use of those applications. So for example, we have civil site design, we have twin motion, we have Enscape, we have e-survey, all of these third party software applications is uh, what you can get access to within the BrickScar application store. <clears throat> it's not loading at present. Yeah, so you, you have park design for parking design applications. You have catalogs, uh, you know, a lot of lot of lot of other third party applications which you can definitely uh, use it on top of over BrickScar. Yeah, uh, so. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, Aman, uh, for the 2D sections that you have uh, shown. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, all at a monohari, Mahita, all at the inside take a club in at the bricks cat can call you a guess of tech. 2D aspects can up a kataka. Notice how have you done a market take a Chinese alternative uh, products, Tibuna, I can a hurry making uh, 2D drafting or they were Karana Puluan killer promise Karla products Tibuna, but unfortunately they did they were not able to deliver, right? They can any kind of features, you know. Screen Nikkei, Api Press Karata Passe, that feature is not actually there. So Evage, Evage Nikan clone Nikka, Evage Tavanika, Namata alternation, alternation Nikak, Neme Bricks Katki and Nikirima Hidden all of them on the Avabo their club in Nathi already inside their club in Nathi, me software can Karana Pulu and Deval Gana. So Api 3D Valati and Kaling, all at a monomer catalog theater on compatibility again a vendor Puluang. Machine requirements can host of tech in Mukakmahari Pichek again, all at Monomari catalog in Ronang, all at a hand pulang and mute Kerla, Saha chat box of Pavichikarana Pulang, all at Monahari Pashnak in Ronang, again a hand up again a three D part take a hit there, all at a Pasi Harimata Kunahari make a home of the Karanakil Monahari catalog in Ronang is some bunding, up my then Aman and then I will be able to answer you. Here itself. So, Monam had a question here and kindly uh, put it in the chat box so you could unmute directly unmute yourselves and uh, ask that problem. Thank you. Uh, okay, Aman, uh, you can continue. Yep. So, uh, BricsCAD, uh, it's to the version. You know, all the versions, the flavors that we have thus come along with a free software called as BricsCAD Shape. Now, BricsCAD shape is something that you can use for conceptual designs, uh, which is a 3D modeling tool which is available for free. In addition to your BricsCAD capabilities, OK, so you have your uh, BricsCAD 2D light, for example, let's say you buy 2D uh, or 2D light uh, with us and then you get access to BricsCAD shape for free. So this is something that's inbuilt. So yep. And this is the model uh, that has been created inside BrickSCAD shape. So this is entirely in 3D, wherein you can get access to all the three commands called quick draw, staircase, poly solids. If you want to draw a box, or if you want to uh, create structures, or if you want libraries that are needed to be inserted. For example, if I want to insert a door over here. I can do that. Let's say today I got inserted on the back end. So I can do that. I can simply move it. Right. Or if I want to change, if I want to delete it, just delete it. These are parametric as well. If I want to change the window orientation, let's say if I want to make it 500, can shift it upwards. Uh, can do a lot of things with this particular uh, property. So if I go over here and I want to draw another section or another box, for example, can simply go to quick draw, start drawing as if I'm drawing in 2D, right? And I can start creating rooms. Now, this is something that's available for free within BricsCAD. If you want to do push and pull, for example, can do a push and pull. If you want to do a connected push and pull, you can simply do that and build your conceptual designs inside BricsCAD. So this is a software that's available for free, uh, even with the 2D light version. Now that's one. Uh, if you go to the pro version of BricsCAD, so let me open a blank drawing. If we go to the pro version, 
I just need to go from drafting to modeling. All I'm doing is changing the workspace because everything in FlexCAD is integrated. OK, so. Close this. I open another file. For example, let me open a garage. So if I open another file, so this is something that you can create in the pro versions. Of course, the entire thing is parametric again. So if you want to change it now, let's say if you want to move it to a uh, thousand, you can do that. If you want to insert a door over here as well, you can do that. So if you go to libraries, let's say panels, libraries, so there are libraries over here. Uh, steps. OK, so there are libraries over here. You can create your own custom libraries as well. So this time around, let's say if I want to insert a furnishing element or if I want to insert windows, can do something of that sort within Brickscatch. So if I want to insert a single window over here or over here, let's say just click it, insert a window and then readjust its size depending on the parameters. And if I go to the properties of the windows, we can go and change the properties of the windows as well. So if you want to change the width of the window or the height of the window can do something. So if I want to change the width of the window to 1200, I can do that and you see the width of the window changed. If I want to change the height of the window to 800, I can change the height of the window as well. Now if I want to move it, now this comes with additional extra features as well. So for example, if I want to draw or modify or move it across. So over here I can move it or I can associatively move it with a brick scan. So this is something that you can get along with your, if I want if you want to create section planes, you can create section planes, for example, or an orthographic section plane from top. You can create a section plane and see what's there inside. And then if you go to furnishing elements, you can simply place your sofas, your chairs and do all the necessary requirement changes if. Uh, whatever is required. OK, so you get all the options of your solid tools, so you get to extrude, revolve, loft, sweep, etc. You get access to surfacing tools, you get access to a basic set of civil tools wherein you can create thin surfaces, you can generate team volumes, you can do grading operations, do a water drop analysis. So uh, build, build grading volumes, of course, do alignments, create corridors, so create your own corridor templates as well, import civil 3D data, import land XML data, etc. is something that you can do in the pro version of BrickScan. And along with that, of course, the uh, rest of the other things, you can create lights, give some properties, give geographic location, assign materials. So this is something that's uh, there inside BrickScan. And of course, you can also bring in point cloud data. OK, so point cloud data is something if you'd be doing reverse engineering, let's say if you're using laser scans in your industry, you can bring in point cloud data in your BrickScan Pro software. So I'm in the moment asking whether we could uh, open uh, KML uh, and KMZ files uh, inside the uh, BrickScan. So uh, is geolocation plus an option for this or any any other uh, solutions that we could uh, answer this question. Yeah. So KML files uh, can be opened uh, inside BrickScan with the help of Spatial Manager, which is an add-in that sits on top of BrickScan. So uh, it's a very, very cost effective add-in and with the help of that add-in, you can import or there is another called as GeoTools. So with the help of GeoTools, uh, something that you can insert KML. Now this, a uh, particular thing geographic location is just to add the locations. OK, wherein you can add the locations of your. Uh, survey data or whatever you would be bringing in, so you can just add the location systems over here. And if you would need to bring your KML, then uh, something that you can do it with either geo tools or uh, spatial manager. OK, uh, sir, we hope yeah. we, uh, that answers your question. Tava Monahari extension, Tiena Wanang, a Prashnator, Monahari Tava specific extension, Tiena Wanang. Please uh, put it in the chat itself and uh, we'll be able to answer that as well. Thanks. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Yeah, so special manager is quite a well-known plugin too, wherein you can import all your data within that. Okay. And in terms of importing file formats, Spritzcat does support a lot of importing options as well. So you can import a lot of uh, file formats in the native files like DXF, DWGs, uh, DGNs, DAEs, SketchUp files, Rhino files, uh, ACIS solid files, CATIA, NX SolidWorks, IFC files, Revit files, Revit project, Revit family files. So all of this is something that you can import in Spritzcat, Parasolids, etc. So, yeah. so if there are any other queries, I'd be happy to answer. OK. Uh, so in terms of our customer success stories, we do have a lot of customers that were able to successfully come uh, and migrate to Brickscan. So you know, this is from Fisbee, which is a very large company in Sweden. And this is from Takamiya, which is a very large company in uh, Japan, right? So, and you can find the same customer success stories even in our, even on our website. Uh, and it's that the PDFs are uh, allowed to be downloaded. So this is something that you can use that as a, as a reference. Watch it as a reference as well. <clears throat> and of course, you know, there's uh, your my credentials. So in case if you'd like to connect with me at any given point of time, please feel free to email it to me on aman.jn at the rate hexagon.com. This is my email address. And do visit us on business.com uh, for you to be able to gain more insights on what can we do in terms of um, drawing models and what solutions do we have to offer? What are the solutions we have to offer as well? So Ashin, uh, I just stop sharing my screen and if there are any questions, you know, I'll be happy to answer those as well. Yes, uh, and uh, thank you Aman for, for a wonderful presentation and uh, for demonstrating the capabilities of BricsCAD in a very uh, intuitive way. So uh, I believe uh, uh, attendees as well got a very good idea of what Bricks could do uh, as a software for your organization alongside uh, the technical capabilities and the financial aspects, uh, financial advantages rather it could bring. I mean, uh, it's a no brainer that BricsCAD is uh, one of the uh, most suited uh, softwares, uh, software for uh, your 2D drafting and uh, 3D modeling application, especially, you know, during times like these where api ekena godak organizations me wena kota focus karanne kohomada api cost cut karanne saha e kohomada us dollars api usage eka minimum ekata tiya ganne kiyala wage prashna tiyena kaaleka actually you know we can a financial advantage eka hindama vitarak ne me dan ollata man hitena honda idea ekak labenna athi the technical technological you know aspects actual bricscad is a very sound software and you all can uh, contact us again uh, may session ek ek passe hari walata mona hari prashna ek tibunot for aman uh, you can contact aman as well if not uh, you all can uh, contact us uh, directly and we'll be there uh, to support you in any case right so i'll just uh, put the uh, email addresses uh, in the chat box itself which you could uh, contact us on Right, uh, so it's akalanka at uh, panacea.lk. Uh, you could uh, contact us too, as well as uh, info uh, at panacea.lk. Uh, so, using these uh, two email addresses, you will be able to uh, get in touch with us. 
for uh, a trial. It could be for a trial or it could be for uh, any type of a question which you may have, uh, you know, with regards to uh, BRICS CAD uh, software itself. So uh, if there are no more uh, questions, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I think after the following we have the other session like wind up Karana. While uh, thank you all again uh, for joining the session. Uh, amidst all your work because we know that me that also like any session we have to get it. Me session like as a bag you know again as putting on then I as an organization. So uh, there will be uh, other sessions as well. Uh, you know uh, to. Uh, to give you an, an understanding of how you could uh, incorporate BricsCAD to uh, improve the productivity at your organization, so we will keep you uh, keep you updated on all of all of those updates and the future programs uh, that we will be conducting on BricsCAD. While thanking uh, Aman as well again for his wonderful presentation. Uh, thank you, all ladies and gentlemen, for attending the attending the session by us. Uh, hopefully, have a, a good day ahead. Thank you.